Hey, what you say, food family? Mike here, and welcome back to the channel for another great culinary adventure. Today we're headed south to Mexico to tackle one of the newest global sensations. I'm talking about birria, but we're not going to be making standard beef birria. That'd be too easy. Today I want to give a shout out to my fellow hunters and venison lovers out there. Yes, that's right. We're going to make slow cooker venison birria. So whether you absolutely love birria and want to experience a new meat, or just have leftover venison roast in your freezer and want to try something new, stick around and I'll show you how it's done. Let's get cooking. Alright folks, everybody knows that any great birria starts with the chilies that we use to make that basic sauce. So today I'm going to be using four different types of dried chilies, ranging from mild to hot. You can change this in your own recipe, whether you personally like a more mild flavor or a hotter flavor. Experiment with these different chilies because they all have a nice different aroma and flavor to them. So do a little research for yourself and see what you may like more than the other. So that being said, we're going to be starting today with our mild chili, and that's a pasilla. Now these things are awesome almost have a chocolatey note smell to them. It's pretty great chili. Now we're moving up in heat level, going to a mild to medium heat with some anchos. Same thing here. Great smell, great flavor in these. That's our mild to medium chili. Now our next step up, we're starting to get into that medium to high heat chilies. And these are Wajio chilies. Now these are going to start to bring the heat, so be careful with these. And we're finally going to finish up our base birria chili recipe with some chili de arbols. Now these things are hot. They're like the little Chinese hot peppers, you know, but great in Mexican cooking. Be careful with these unless you like it hot. So just keep that in mind. So all we need to do today to start our birria recipe is cut the stems and the tops off these dry chilies. Then we'll dump the seeds in this bowl, just get rid of them. We don't need them. And then we'll toast them off in a pan for a couple minutes till they're aromatic. And then we're gonna put some beef stock on top of those, bring it up to a boil and let those just simmer and soak up those delicious flavors and start to rehydrate before we move on to the next step. All right, welcome back folks. As you can see behind me on the stove, we got those dried chilies steeping in that hot beef stock. We're gonna let that go for about 10 or 15 minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna finish making the rest of our birria sauce. Now, as you can see in front of me, I got some white onion, about a half a white onion, roughly chopped. The other half of the white onion, I went ahead and finally minced up. This will be for uh, plating and service later, so we can go ahead and set this to the side. Now, other than that onion, we got a couple chipotles and adobo sauce. I got six cloves or so of garlic I went ahead and smashed, and a can of diced tomatoes. We're gonna to start this birria sauce off by sauteing these veggies in some avocado oil for, oh, five or six minutes, just so they start to break down, and then we're gonna season them with some key ingredients. Today we're gonna to be using cumin, thyme, salt pepper, of course, some ginger, and finally some Mexican oregano. Now, Mexican oregano is way different than your normal oregano you're gonna have in your pantry or you find at the store. It's got a much more bright lemon fragrant smell to it absolutely amazing go out on amazon and order it because if you can't find it in your local store absolutely a game changer in this recipe so let's get started here by sauteing these veggies get them seasoned up and we'll come back for the next step All right, folks, you just saw we sauteed those veggies just long enough for the onion to start to soften up. I'm going to go ahead and season these up with some salt and pepper. And then finally, those key Mexican ingredients I was talking about earlier, that oregano and the cumin and the ginger and the thyme. Now we're going to go ahead and stir this together for a few minutes. Let those dry herbs start to rehydrate and bring those uh, aromatics and delicious flavors out. All right, folks, the next step we got to do here today is take those dried chilies that are steeped in that beef stock and uh, rehydrated. We're going to pour all that into this pot, let it come together for a few minutes over a medium to medium load heat just to combine those flavors. We'll throw that in our blender, blend it up into a fine puree, 
and then we'll finally get everything introduced to our slow cooker, get it cooking, set and forget, we'll be on our way. All right, folks, you just saw there in a previous clip. We transferred our uh, beer ingredients to our blender, gave it a good puree. One thing I will remind you of, if you're pureeing or blending hot liquids, be sure to vent the top or use a, loose, a towel loosely over the top. Hot liquids will go everywhere make a giant mess. You don't want a beery a red kitchen. Trust me, not fun to clean up. So the only thing left to do today is get this venison in the slow cooker, cover with this beery sauce, and set and forget it. So today, for the venison, I'm actually using three different cuts. I got a sirloin tip, a bottom round roast, and then what I, what I would normally turn into uh, jerky or some other scrap type pieces that I pulled off the uh, shanks and the quarters. You can really use any cuts of venison you like. Traditional beer, yeah, you're going to use like chuck roast and maybe some beef short ribs. So that being said, if you got some shanks hanging out in your freezer, that would be great in a slow cooker because all that connective tissue will break down. Add amazing flavor to this venison beer, yeah made in the slow cooker. I don't know what else to say, but all right. So let's get this stuff put in there. We're gonna keep, keep it real simple. We're not even gonna saute the meat. We're not gonna sear it, nothing. We're just putting it all in, setting it on there and getting it cooking. So let's take the lid off. Like I said, I'm just dropping my meat straight in. And now I'm gonna pour this birria sauce we just made all over it. One thing I will also remind you of here, one additional note, if your blender does not puree things up very well, if it stay, stays kind of chunky, run this through a cheesecloth or a fine mesh sieve to uh, keep those major chunks out. Otherwise, we'll just get it in there and let it go. All right, and to finish our slow cooker venison beer off, we got two more ingredients. I'm gonna add a couple bay leaves. Just right on top. And finally, one stick of cinnamon. I'm gonna put the lid on this slow cooker venison birria, set it over on the countertop, let this go. You can go low for eight to 10 hours, high four to six. This fancy new Vinja foodie possible, whatever slow cooker, it's uh, God's gift to man. This thing actually cooks everything very fast. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna cook mine on low for four to six hours, but I'm gonna start checking about three. The trick is when the meat starts to pull apart, just shred when you grab it with some tongs, it's done. That's all you gotta do. So depending on your slow cooker, that's gonna be how long you gotta cook it. But we're just going to sit in here, put the lid on, and forget it. We'll come right back when the uh, meat's starting to pull. Get the next step, give it a taste test, see how we did. All right, folks, we got our venison beer you plated up. You saw it shredded just like tender, juicy meat in that slow cooker. It pulled apart with no problem whatsoever. I cannot wait to taste this. We got it looking pretty with that diced onion, a little bit of cilantro, because it's Mexican. Of course, we want to keep those roots in there. So we all know look is only half the battle. Let's give it a taste test and see how it turned out. All right, folks, I don't know how to describe that venison birria, but tender, juicy, fall apart in your mouth, delicious meat. You don't even know it's venison. There's no such game flavor in there whatsoever. It tastes just like chuck roast, whatever you're using in your normal birria. I highly suggest trying this recipe out, especially you hunters out there that have extra roasts and scrap uh, venison meat in your freezers, looking for a new way to try out different recipes. This venison birria is one you need to try for yourself. If you don't believe my word for it, let's bring in my eight-year-old son, who's a venison connoisseur. He loves the stuff. You turn around, he'll eat the whole bowl. So let's bring him in, have him give a taste test, and he'll tell you what he thinks. All right, here he is, Andrew. Give it a taste test. Tell him what you think. Spicy? No. See, folks, that's what I was talking about earlier. Watch those chilies you put in it. I made this kind of mild just for his sake because I know he's going to love it. 
So if you like your spicier, put a lot more of those chili de herbals in there. Anything else you want to tell them? Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe as always. So that being said, be sure to check the link in the description below. That will see you on my website with the normal standard version of birria and a lot of other great recipes for you to check out. If you like what I made here today, be sure to click that like button, leave a comment below. That tells YouTube and myself I'm putting out great content and you want to see more of it. Until next time, folks, Mike here signing off. Just keep cooking.